Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. And I am doing a rare nighttime video blog because the team and myself have been working uh, all day to finish the tropical atrium plants and they are now done. So I said I would do the happy dance and that was it because those plants took us months to complete. It was uh, the template for what it was that we were going to use for all of our food infrastructure and now it is complete and so I'm doing our video blog in the evening instead of uh, when I normally do it during the daytime. And so this is our weekly update blog, video blog number 26, covering our productivity and accomplishments for the week of August 19th, 2013 as our nonprofit organization an organization for the highest good of all, continues to work towards creating open source blueprints and free sharing those blueprints for rebuilding the world as a sustainable place to live that works for everyone. And our project addresses food, energy, housing, social injustice, recreation, education, fulfilled living, puts it all together in a model and a template that we want to demonstrate as a teacher demonstration village and that can be duplicated all over the world as either teacher demonstration communities, villages, cities, or hubs. And that's the purpose of our organization. So as is the format for these video blogs, I'm going to go through a bullet point of everything that we accomplished in this last week, and it is huge. And then I will go into the details, uh, a little more details on each one of these items, and uh, just kind of discuss what's happening behind the scenes. So bullet points. Uh, what we accomplished this last week, we got the tropical atrium plants done. I'm so excited to have that done, months of work. Um, Zenopini 1 and 2 plants are now up and descriptions are next. So those details are up on the website. I'll talk about what that means in a second if people don't already know. Um, oh, and always, as always, there's always a written blog that goes along with these video blogs. So our website is, is massive. It's huge because it's all about open source sharing everything that we do so that can be duplicated. And so if you want to see the details and actually get into the meat and potatoes, the, uh, the rice and beans of everything that we're creating, check out the written blog that goes along with this companion written blog that goes with this video blog and you'll see links and pictures and everything in there. So Zenopini 1 and 2 plants are now up on the website. You can see everything that we're going to grow there all as part of our open source botanical garden model to share and spread biological diversity and support the uh, rare and endangered plants of the world and help spread that and uh, also to provide an amazing diversity of food um, that people aren't used to eating that is so healthy and a lot with amazing medicinal benefits. Uh, also we've got um, all of our open source info done on where to buy all of these plants and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Hoop houses information is done so the hoop houses are a great super affordable way to extend the growing season by a couple months on each end and so all that those details are done behind the scenes as well our apiary information which is bee details are also done behind the scenes so we're excited to share that um, rabbit purchasing and production details are also done um, which is a component that we'll be putting up on the website hopefully this week the sago center first and second floor are now done as far as all the foundational walls and they're trimmed so they don't stick outside of the domes and this is all talking about the 3D. Seiko Center is a duplicate city hub. Talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the earth bag village materials are done. We're just finishing up some, all, um, some additional slab research, laying the slab and foundation on that. But the pricing details are all done behind the scenes and I'll get those up this week as well. Strawvale Village is now going into CAD thanks to the help of our partner, Dave Whalen, and um, he's putting that into CAB now, and that page has been completely redesigned and updated now that the Straw Bale, which is pod two or the second sustainable village, demonstrating maximum uh, modular sustainability, maximally expandable modular sustainability, is now starting to move forward, and so if you go to the written blog, you can see an image, a screen capture of that starting to happen. And then uh, the Education for Life, the free shared and open source Education for Life program with our goal to put free education in the hands of everybody around the world, anybody with an internet connection, and to uh, build a community-based open source and free shared education program that meets and, uh, as it's designed, 
far exceeds traditional education models. Uh, our examination of a new earth is now uh, complete, and so we're in the process of just finishing out those components and breaking down and creating our strategies of being page for that. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail as well. Um, we added three new partners to our team uh, this week. Dave Wayland, who I already mentioned, who's working on the, er the Straw Bale Village Pod 2. Um, Rob, as well, who is a uh, pool expert and is helping us with our open source natural pool designs. And you can click on the link and see all these details. And then uh, Ryan Beretta, also, who is adding some magic to our to our videos because he's a music composer, amazing music composer, who's actually been working with us for a long, long time, helping us out, and uh, you know, has specifically been designing some music for the last six weeks or so, but he finally uh, got us his bio, and so we're happy to be able to share that on our website as well. And so three new partners added. Uh, we also, in the last week, <coughs> excuse me, had three media mentions, which is very exciting, and I will add those links to the written blog as well if you want to check those out two radio uh, interviews, a podcast and a radio interview, as well as a mention on Paul Check, holistic health professional uh, and a mentor, personal mentor to myself. I mentioned our project on his blog, which was very exciting. And last but certainly not least, we have updated our nonprofit page, which is our nonprofit overview. What is the nonprofit purpose of one community? And that page has been completely redesigned and simplified and streamlined uh, just based on feedback that we've gotten from everybody. And as always, we're super grateful to hear from people that uh, give us suggestions that help make the website and our whole open source production even better. So, man, it was a busy week. Uh, lots of cool stuff getting accomplished. There's actually a few other little things, too, that I forgot in there, but I'll just leave those out. We'll talk about them next week. Let me go over a little bit more detail in a little bit more detail about the things that really that we got done this week. The tropical atrium plants, tropical atrium plants, woo, hap dance. Months of work went into the tropical atrium plants. Tropical atrium was the first open source food piece that we really started digging in deeply and saying, okay, what are we gonna plant? Where are we gonna plant it? And how are we gonna describe this on the website? So it covers all the necessary details that people need to know, like a picture, a description of what the plan is, the plant, a description of what the plant is, the planting guidelines, how to plant it, the placement guidelines, why every plant was chosen for exactly where it was chosen for, and then the cultural considerations, the things to consider long term about that plant, and then also a Wikipedia link to more information. So it's a one-stop guide for a great overview with links to additional information, a picture and everything. That process of evolving what these plants are gonna look like, and it started with the tropical atrium, and now you can see it on Wallapini 1 and 2 and 3 and the large scale Aquapini as well as Xenopini 1 and Xenopini 2. That formatting process has taken months. I mean, we really put a lot, uh, we put so much time and energy into it that we created an open source guide on how to do this because as we continue to evolve this global collaborative working on bringing food diversity to people and demonstrating the broad diversity of food that is out there that most people have no idea even exists because it's just not profitable enough or there's not enough uh, consumer demand because people don't know about it you have to build a whole market for some of these amazing foods to sell them in the grocery store and so as we continue to expand the global archive of this data and this information, we created a tutorial for how other people who want to participate in this would want to format those pages to make them look as good and as professional and to have the detail and the level of information that our pages have. And so um, creating that, like I said, took months and we've been working on, we've had, uh, we've had five members of our team working on the Tropical Atrium to get this page done. And now it is done. And so I invite everybody to check it out, take a look, share it with people. It is really amazing. The only piece that's still missing on that, and the plants were the big part, were the um, food production projections, which are also done behind the scenes. And uh, so we just need to add those up onto the website as well. Now, the Tropical Atrium is not really a food production house other than the tropical fruit trees. It's meant to be more of a demonstration of an internal environment, internal tropical environment. Um, but it does produce a ton of herbs, and it produces uh, a bunch of fruit. 
and um, and so we'll we'll have all those details up uh, this week as well. So crazy exciting. And then with that, I mentioned that we got Zenopini one and two plants are now up on the website. So Michael Martin, our botanist, has chosen <clears throat> a diversity of plants that excuse me. He's really the brains behind uh, all the the other structures. The tropical atrium was done by our horticulturist uh, Bear, and he did a phenomenal job on that. And then Michael has been putting together all the food, all the plants, and choosing all the plants, doing all the research, our botanist, for all the other food production structures. And the goal was to support our open source botanical garden model and provide a diversity of plants that far exceeds what you can get in the grocery store as well as a diversity of nutrition because some of these plants are just so amazingly nutritious and have so many amazing medicinal properties we wanted to demonstrate to people that just growing food could easily be done in the structures that we're creating but if you really want to grow foods that are going to, that are going to truly support people and provide the broad diversity of food that most people want and desire in their life that's going to make people really happy and healthy then that's what we really want to demonstrate. And so uh, if you want to see the list of all those foods, and now we're just going through the process behind the scenes, and if you go to the web page, you can actually click on it. You can see that there's links there to the pages that aren't done to the Google Docs, so you can see the raw information and see the amount of research and time and energy that has gone in to creating these food lists. You know, it's not like we're just growing tomatoes and cucumbers. We're covering all that stuff, too. But, you know, the details on breadfruit and jackfruit and loquats and all these things that a lot of people, 50 different types of apple, 50 different types of fig, these kinds of things <clears throat> are the things that we have, we have put all this time and energy into researching. And so those lists and some of the pictures, uh, all the pictures for large-scale aquapini are now done. So you can see that all the pictures are now done for the tropical atrium. So you can see that. And you can also see the list of the foods as we're continuing now to update and put those pictures on there and get more and more details up. And so it's just an ongoing process uh, that the team is working on. Also, uh, behind the scenes, we finished all of the source info. So where to get these plants. And a lot of them are really hard to find. I mean, Michael did hours and hours of research. I think he did probably 30 or 40, uh, 30 or 40 hours of research just on sourcing the plants. So where can you actually buy these plants? How do you get access to these plants? Where do you get this plant material? Because some of these plants are so rare and endangered that you have to really be an expert in the field to know where to get them. And once we can grow these plants, we can make these things more available to everybody. You know, we, some of these things, we talked about it, we could become the source in North America for distributing these plants and providing them to other people that want to grow these things because the plants are so amazing and they need our stewardship. And when I say our, I mean humanity's stewardship to get these plants back on their feet and, and to um, support them and to help propagate them, help spread them and make them more available because they're, some of them have been, have been uh, almost wiped out. They're almost extinct. You know, some of them are so rare that they are extinct in the wild and they're only now grown in botanical gardens and in greenhouses and things like that. And so we've really brought together a diversity of plants that is truly... Uh, arguably unparalleled in the world as far as uh, what it is that we're going to be growing at one community and so and what it is that we're going to be sharing as open source content and that's why I'm so excited about having all these pages and all these descriptions done so people can read about these amazing plants and start understanding what is available to us as a species on this planet what is available to us to grow to consume to have a, to have uh, to enjoy and so very very exciting Along with that, um, we got all of our hoop house information done. So in addition to the large-scale Aquapini and Wallapini 1, Wallapini 2, Wallapini 3, those are all um, houses that, food production houses that will each demonstrate a different internal environment. We've also then looked at exactly how much food can you produce on the land and what the best way to grow that food is when it comes to you know, potatoes and zucchini and this kind of stuff. And so um, the hoop house information that we've done behind the scenes and we'll be getting up on the website is covers all of that. And it shows, and we've done projections on exactly how much food we're going to need to produce to meet our goals of being 100% food self-sufficient on the property and then ramping that up to where you're doing enough, creating enough food production to fully feed 600 people. 
to completely provide for 600 people. And so, and then beyond that, but that's our initial goal is going, okay, let's ramp that up starting with 30, you know, and it takes years to develop the food necessary to be able to grow some of these trees that will feed, you know, a whole village, um, one breadfruit tree or one jackfruit tree, but you've got to get that tree to the point where it's really producing first. And so we've done all the calculations on all that. And then supplemental to that are hoop houses, which are super affordable and somebody could land on a piece of property and set up hoop houses really, really cheaply and start and extend their growing season and immediately start planting things that are going to help to regenerate the soil and create a lasting, sustainable food infrastructure. And so uh, exciting to have that stuff done behind the scenes. Along with that are our apiary details, which is, you know, if you're going to do that, if you don't have bees, and right now if people aren't aware, we got a real bee problem that's happening in the world. The bees are dying off. And so, um, you know, one of the aspects that we really want to maintain on the property and we would recommend for other people is running your own bee colony, maintaining your own bee colony. And so we priced out those details and uh, gotten all that information as well. We'll get that up on the website this week. And then um, same thing with rabbits. Uh, rabbits for people that are non-vegetarians and our organization has vegans, vegetarians, and omnivores on it. And so rabbits are something that we eat. Rabbits, goats for milk, and chickens for eggs. A little bit of meat maybe from goats. Um, yeah, but the ethical uh, raising of wildlife is something that we are in support of animal husbandry and so we've done the research on purchasing rabbits and maintaining rabbits and they really are a great source of uh, protein for people that eat meat and so we've done the details and the research on that as well exactly what kind of rabbits it is that we're going to buy and you know they're also a great way of helping to produce uh, fertilizer as well as eating all the vegetation scraps that would be left over. So it's a fast way to turn those things into quicker compost than just composting. And so once again, as a food is a really delicate issue. I've had, we've gotten lots of emails from people that are vegetarians and so it's very important to say, to once again point out that we have vegans, we have vegetarians, and we have omnivores as part of our group. And we believe that the highest good of all approach to food is to be non-ideological about it. And so um, in support of the diversity that is humanity, a large, large portion of which are omnivores, uh, we want to really demonstrate a highest good of all approach that includes ethical and humane animal husbandry. And so uh, the rabbit details are part of that. Also I mentioned that we got the Sago Center, um, first and second floor are done and trimmed. So we've got the walls in the first and second floor are done. We've trimmed them off, which is a big deal. It's really difficult to do round structures in SketchUp. SketchUp's a free program. Anybody can use it. So we're doing all of our 3D in SketchUp so that as part of our open source goals, other people can take, we'll take these files once they're done, they'll be able to download them, and then they'll be able to manipulate them and use them and do whatever they want with them uh, to change it. And so when we've built the relationships with the companies that can provide Dome Incorporated is uh, the company that can provide these domes and ship them anywhere in the world. And so the Sego Center duplicable city hub is a big part of this model that we're creating and that we want to share with people. And so as we continue to put it in 3D, it has been a super, super learning curve. There's been a lot of details that we've been working out. Last week, we had to redesign the whole bathrooms and the social dome and um, because of code. And so we're just continuing to move that stuff into 3D now. Very, very exciting. It's looking really cool. We're going to start working on the outside uh, details of it this week and then we'll get back into the inside. If anybody knows anyone that is a 3D expert, we are looking for, we're looking to build our team of, of SketchUp 3D folks that want to work with us because we still have a lot of 3D work that's going on. we got two people working pretty much full time on the Sago Center and putting their energy into that, but we've also got the food infrastructure and the Earthback Village and then the Strawberry Village. All these details need to be done and so, uh, you know, those details, it's coming along and we could use additional 3D people. So if anybody knows anyone, please share what we're up to because we're, we're looking for 3D people that would like to be partners, consultants with our project or join us as pioneers. And so Sago Center is one area that's really, really moving forward in 3D. It's exciting to see that happening. Uh, additionally, I said we got the Earthbag Village materials are done. All those materials are done. So they're going to be start going up on the website uh, this week. And now we are working on the shower dome and the toilet domes in there. And then we'll start working on the tropical atrium. And so, but the homes are actually 
done, those details are done, which is also an immense amount of work. And if you haven't seen it, we've also completed separate from that all of the tools and equipment necessary to build the Earthbag Village. And so every single detail that you need to build an individual home, a trio of three domes, or to build the entire village, all that stuff has been completed on the website. And now we just need to add the materials on too. And we're getting pretty close to wrapping up everything that we need for the Earthbag Village. And that, of course, includes where to buy all these materials, who to contact, all those details are on there. So, very exciting. Straw Bale Village, I said, is going into CAD, thanks to Dave Whalen. I'll post a picture of that. Straw Bale Village, the Earthbag Village, is maximally affordable sustainability. Like, if we wanted to build a village in Haiti, if we wanted to build a village in Louisiana, if we wanted to build a village anywhere in the world, what would be the cheapest, most affordable way to do that? Uh, Earthbag is probably it. You know, you could ship Earthbags anywhere in the world, super affordable, dirt is free, and they just need a stabilizer with that. And so <clears throat> that's the purpose of the Earthbag Village. The purpose of the Straw Bale Village is maximum expandability of sustainability. So the idea with the Straw Bale Village is we've designed it as a double torus, <coughs> excuse me, as a circle within a circle. And the way that we're going to build that is we'll build the first quarter of the circle to demonstrate what that looks like. And then to show you that if you wanted to, you could stop right there. You could just build a communal kitchen and the recreational spaces there. You could build a quarter of this and you could stop. Say you wanted housing only for, you know, 10 families, something like that. You could just build a quarter of the village and you would have that. And then say you added another 10 families to your community, to your village, to your city, your growing city, then you could expand on that. You could build and add on to that. And so while ours is meant to be a circle because we're going to put an orchard, a protected orchard in the center there, and there's a whole bunch of uh, reasons why we want to do that. You can see the details on the website. The design itself is designed so that if somebody wanted to continue to expand that in like a, a, a snake-like fashion, you could keep adding units onto that, expanding on your plumbing, expanding on your heating and air conditioning, and building onto that. And you can make it pretty much as long as you want. And so that is our idea with the Straw Bale Village. And I'm super excited to see David getting that into uh, CAD because it's finally moving forward. You know, the Straw Bale Village will be the first one that we build, but as soon as we're done with that, we're going to take everything that we learned there and then add it to, I'm sorry, the Earthbag Village, the first one, and then start building the Straw Bale Village. And so, and then the internal walls on that will be earth block. And, excuse me, <coughs> still working on this little cough. And then, then we'll do earth block on the inside of that. Then we'll start building the Cobb Village. Then we'll build a whole earth block village. And so the idea is there's this progressive integration of more and more complex um, sustainability methodologies leading up to earth ships and treehouse, uh, sustainable treehouses. And so, you know, all of this stuff being engineered and permitted so that people can start building this stuff instead of trying to cir circumvent the system within the system and we want to see the international building code expanded to this you know and then taking these ideas to third world countries and the places where they're really needed the most and building infrastructure there and sharing these technologies and these ideas with those third world countries and taking the things that they might know that we might not be able to know and putting that into global collaborative as well and so <clears throat> this is the big picture and why we talk about how you know our goal is to rebuild the world right our goal in rebuilding the world is this idea of we have the resources and we have the technology, we have the know-how to live completely sustainably. We have this, this exists. We have the ability to be able to provide for every single person on this planet. It doesn't make any sense that thousands of people are starving every single day when we have the technology now to build the food infrastructure to support those people. But to do that, we got to get mainstream support behind it. You know, to do that, we need to we need to have funding to be able to bring that whole thing together. And I don't mean one community. I mean, as a planet, we need people interested in saying, "Hey, I want to build infrastructure in Haiti." And so our solution to that is to provide a lifestyle that we think most people will consider superior to traditional models, and to provide a, a clear roadmap, a clear path to creating that lifestyle that's founded on sustainable infrastructure. And then by supporting that and creating that idea, by giving people, not that idea, but by demonstrating it so people see the idea, they experience the living experience, and then saying, here are the open source and free shared blueprints 
so that you can take everything that we've created and duplicate it over here and 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 in so doing create a permanent settlement a permanent teacher demonstration hub that will share everything that you have to enrich and help support the surrounding community to teach them what they need and to bring revenue to that area to bring additional funds necessary for expansion and giving back to the surrounding communities this is a process that can change the world it can revolutionize the way that people choose to live it's more efficient it's more effective it's more ecological it's more sustainable and it produces happier healthier people and it provides the resources where the resources are needed most not as a bandage not as a fix not as a short-term solution but as a permanent teacher demonstration hub there to help and to provide the infrastructure that's necessary and so this is what we're doing and so it's exciting for me to see the Earthbag Village coming along so I mean it's pretty much it's starting to wrap up as far as everything that we need and then we're going to be getting into the final engineering details and permitting and stuff like that and now to see this happening with the Straw Bale Village and so this is the whole idea is creating you know first maximally affordable sustainability then modularly, easily modularly and maximally expandable sustainability and then we'll continue on with all these other sustainable models and so the complete village package once again is to create self-sufficiency but self-sufficiency that gives back more than it takes. So not just self-sufficiency, not just a net zero living example, but a net negative, something that literally is regenerative to the planet that provides more than it takes. It's not just break even, it's giving back and it's starting to regenerate biodiversity. It's starting to bring back this food diversity that's been lost. It's starting to expand on these ideas and once again to create that global network that global collaborative to rebuild the world together because we have the ability to do this it's just time to stop putting bandages on there and to start thinking comprehensive and this is why we call ourselves a highest good for all organization and this is the purpose of what it is that we're doing and with that we have the education for life program so i said that we've got the strategies of being which is the uh, strategies of great teachers leaders and communicators that we want to be the foundation for everybody at one community in our interaction with each other and our interaction with the world. And so a big piece of that has been the book A New Earth, which uh, <clears throat> I read a couple of years ago and it came, when did it come out? It's been a few years now since I read that and most of the people on our team have already read it. And so um, we had somebody new who's a teacher reading it and she decided to take comprehensive notes and say, hey, why don't we use this as a foundation for teaching teachers how to be better teachers and as a foundation for our educational program. And so the Education for Life program is a free shared and open source education program that has several different components. And one of those components is the strategies of being. And then there's the curriculum for life, which covers all the basics, like math and science and reading, things like that. But also much more than that, like integrity and honesty and love and connection and uh, the, you know these more esoteric ideas that are arguably more important perhaps even than those other foundations, or at least equally as important. And so, and then with that, we've got a whole page, and all this stuff is already done in design, is the strategies of teaching. And so there's strategies for teaching math and science and love and connection and integrity and honesty and communication, public speaking, business skills. All these different things can be plugged into these teaching strategies and combined with our teaching tools section tools and toys educational and learning tools and toys section to create endless lesson plans and that's what our whole open source education model is about and like everything else it's a big open source collaborative the idea is that anybody can plug into it use it the way that they want if people want to participate and help us make it even better we're engaging the global uh, population the global family to contribute their ideas to this and to help make it better and so um, we're excited to say that we're, we've done, we're done with that review, and so now the next step is we've taken what turned out to be pages and pages of notes. We've distilled that down into kind of like, okay, here's the general ideas. If we were to say one sentence that would describe these two or three pages of notes, now how can we distill these two or three pages down into one paragraph? And so that's, that's the next step. Is, um, is doing that. And so this week, that's what we're working on. And hopefully, we'll wrap that up, and then we'll start working on the ultimate classroom. 
And um, last couple things, I said that we added three new partners to the team. So you can check, you can click on the uh, written, written video blog, I'm sorry, the written blog that goes along with the, uh, this blog if you want to check that out and see who those folks are and more, read their complete bios. And I'll also have a link there to the three media mentions that have happened this last week, which is two interviews of myself, as well as uh, the mention by Paul Check on his blog, which is very exciting. And then the last but certainly not least, uh, our nonprofit page has been totally updated and redesigned and simplified, clarified, uh, per the feedback of everybody. So thank you for that. And I'll have a link for that as well on the, uh, in the written blog. So thank you very much. As always, if you're somebody that would like to be a part of transformational global change, historic global change, um, we're always looking for new partners, new consultants, new pioneers, new satellite members, new international members, people that want to get involved with what it is that we're creating and want to be a part of something that really makes a difference. We've got lots of ways to participate. Uh, the simplest way is just check out our pages and liking and sharing them on Facebook. It's really, really helpful. Um, specifically, our funding page, onecommunityglobal.org forward slash funding. Uh, we are looking for funding right now to get the property off the market. Either an investment or a donation to our nonprofit would be the number one biggest thing that would help us right now. We'd be able to just get the property off the market so that we can market that location, so we can share that location with the world and all the you know couple of years now, almost three years of work that's gone into that location, as far as you know, working with the county and preparing our business plan and our model, and everything around that location, which is perfect for sharing one community with the world, for throwing the doors wide, inviting people to come in, visit and experience everything that we're doing uh, right from day one. A beautiful place to visit, so people can come start checking it out as soon as possible, and then taking everything that we're doing out and duplicating it in other locations. And so, if anybody knows anybody that would like to invest in one community, that would be super, super, super exciting for us. And um, it would really open up the doors to a lot more information that we can't share right now because we just don't own that property and we'd hate to see it uh, disappear off the market and go into the hands of somebody else. So, um, with that, I am complete. Thank you, as always, for checking it out. One more happy dance for the Tropical Atrium. Woo! There it is, little cabbage patch, little sprinkler. Um, man, moving forward, big things, never a dull moment. Until next week, thanks for following our progress, and we will keep on keeping on. Thanks for all your uh, wonderful emails and all the positive support and everywhere. Thanks for liking our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash one community fans, and facebook.com forward slash one community updates, and our Twitter feed, uh, w, uh, Twitter dot com forward slash one community org and of course this youtube channel please if you like these weekly updates you like to check in and just see what's going on be reminded that we're moving forward and creating world change subscribe to our youtube channel we really appreciate that as well so that thank you very much have a great night day week <laughs>